The Helmut Newton retrospective presented by Foam contains slightly over 200 prints, varying from very rare, hardly ever exhibited prints to the iconic images that are quite well known all over the world. He was born 1920 in Berlin, and then he had to flee the Nazis 1938. He became a photographer before. He did an apprenticeship at EVA, 1936 to 1938. Later, in Australia, he became a portrait photographer and a fashion photographer as well. But um, after his start of the magazine business in 1961 with French Vogue, he was the photographer Helmut Newton. First and foremost, Helmut Newton was a storyteller. In each single frame, he presents a little story as a single frame of film. And of course, we are seduced to think what happened before and what will happen afterwards. So Helmut Newton took great care in constructing all the elements that took part in the little story. Location, hotel rooms, mirrors, and of course the model. They all played a part in creating a certain atmosphere, creating a certain mood. And of course, we are part of the seduction. We are part of the story, not as a bystander, but as an active participant. There was no improvisation. Okay, so he knew exactly, Sylvia, you stand over here, the other girl over there, the chair over here, so okay, move around, perfect, don't move. And he started to shoot, and at that time, you have to imagine, we were on analog pictures, and he shot with Leica or Rollerflex, so you couldn't do thousands of pictures, so he had to construct it. He did a Polaroid to check the light, to check the position, we watched the Polaroid, and then he said, okay, let's go and shoot. One or two rolls, and that was it. The influence of Helmut Newton and his work on fashion photography, on the kind of photography that we see in uh, society, is really huge. Helmut Newton referred to himself as a gun from high. He worked primarily on commission basis, working for fashion houses and fashion magazines. But although the commission meant that he had to work within a certain framework, he loved it because he could push the framework, he could create space, he could create more freedom for himself, but eventually also for artists that came after him, because he blurred the line between these different genres. My first photo shoot with Helmut Newton was for the French Vogue, and at that time, of course, French Vogue never published naked women before. That was not supposed to be uh, in a Vogue magazine. But Helmut Newton decided for the 1981 Haute Couture edition, he would do four women dressed in Haute Couture Chanel and Saint Laurent clothes, and then same position, naked. These pictures were not made to seduce men, but these pictures showed us that a powerful woman who is independent is as powerful with clothes, which are haute couture, or naked. No difference. She just shows you your strength. So his big nudes printed, life-sized, were exhibited directly after he photographed it. He came to the idea to, to have the, to the models uh, in a life-size form, but naked. This was the first time that a photographer decided to have a naked model in life-size. He was thinking about to have a, let's say, a combination with, a, with women, naked women, and the German terrorism. So this is kind of interesting because he, he saw um, in the German police station some life-size images of the German terrorists of the Red Army Fraction, Bader Meinhof Gang. So and then he decided after he saw that to um, to use models as in the same way, life-size. 
In the 1970s and 1980s, Helmut Newton was considered by some being a typical sexist photographer who made use and abuse of women. I think this is a completely wrong uh, perception. Helmut Newton adored women. He loved them and he showed them as self-assured, confident, strong women. And in a sense, he is a representation of emancipation and feminism. You have to imagine we are in 1981. So we are in uh, the movement of emancipation. Women start to uh, ask for the same salary as men. So a powerful woman means a woman who is independent. She doesn't need a man. And that's what Helmut Jung was. He was a feminist. He was for powerful women, independent women. I was convinced he was a voyeur. There's a famous quote that says, if a photographer says he is not a voyeur, he's either a liar or stupid. Howard Newton said, my life is passing by while I'm looking through a tiny hole to a fantasy. That's voyeurism. And he presents his fantasies to us and he shares them with us. So he turns us, spectators, also into voyeurs. We are part of the fantasy. In Newton's work, it's all about seeing and being seen, showing and hiding. It's a play between voyeurism and exhibitionism, a play between the two sexes, the male gaze and the woman who decides by herself to display something that normally gets hidden. To look at someone and to look at somebody means that you have a certain distance. A certain distance is required. That means that Helmut Newton also puts his model on a certain distance. They are almost beyond reach. We can look at them, but they are hardly alive. They are idealized women. Perfect, tall, strong, but hardly real. Are they real? He touches upon themes that in our current society are still very relevant, urgent and much debated. For instance, how do we deal nowadays with nudity? How do we deal with the female representation in the media? Helmut Newton's work, in a sense, reflects and comments the time he was living in. So it's quite interesting to see how Helmut Newton and his work is perceived and appreciated now.